So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 11. And today is July the 21st, 2022. It's my birthday. So thank you very much for all the well wishes. The topic for today and the for, for today's play shop is emotional mastery. So um, and let's see. So the reason why I, I picked this is that. Like early in the week, I think maybe end um, end of Sunday um, or really early beginning uh, in, on Monday, I was like feeling some emotional things bubbling up. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And when I, um, I think that's when I saw um, Jason Estes was, was mentioning that because um, last week, like this all pretty much um, all of July, we're moving through some um, the body things. So really clearing out um, stuff that's, that's in our body. And so um, the previous week, last week, it was really about the, bo the body itself, so physical body. And then this week, the, the, the clearing is really from our emotional body. So I think that was why I, I really felt the emotional body um, giving me a, a, a knock on the door, letting me know that, you know, there's something I need to, to look at. So, so, yeah, so that's why uh, I came up with the um, topic for today's play shop is emotional mastery. So um, as always, I'm going to actually share the um, what's going on with, uh, let's see, yes. So this is emotional mastery. So this is the agenda for this evening. We're gonna do check-in and then a, a presence meditation. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the role of emotions. Um, so all of this, and then also how to stabilize our emotional body. And then after that, uh, to stabilize. Once we are stable enough, then we can actually go to clear our emotional body. Because if we are in a trigger state, it's it's pretty hard to clear. So we. When, whenever we feel triggered, we have to stabilize first and then do the, the clearing. So that's how I have structured this. So now that I have went through this, let's get back to um, just doing a quick um, check-in. Welcome everybody. And also it, any Anything anybody wants to share, anything, um, any questions from last time? Last time I was talking about the creation matrix. So just opening the, the, the floor. Going once, going two, going twice, going three times. Okay, so no questions and great. So then let's do a, just a very brief, um, presence meditation. So just take in a deep breath. And let it all go. Take another deep breath in. And let it all go. Take one more deep breath in. And let it all go. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing. And use your breath to assist you in coming back to yourself. As you breathe in, imagine that you, besides breathing in oxygen, breathing in air that you need it for your body, also bring back all of your attention back into your own body. Bring back all of the attention into your body.
and then simply request. Make a request for all parts of you. to come back to you in this moment. So really feel yourself coming back to yourself. Call back your soul. Call back all your energies. Call back all your attention. Let go of any thoughts and simply be with your body in this moment. And just use your breath to assist you in bringing all parts of you back inside, back within yourself. And when you start to feel that you're aware of everything that's going on with yourself, you really feel yourself being solidly present within your body, then you can come back. And just take a deep breath in let it all go and come all the way back. So welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. And um, let me just get to, so the next thing we're going to talk about is really how to stabilize our emotions. The big topic is how to stabilize our emotions. Because... Um, I don't know about you, you guys, but I've been really feeling a lot of um, emotions coming up every now and then. And I've been very um, conscientious about um, being present to myself when the emotions come in so that I can take care of them and um, not to let anything, left anything um, swept under the rock, uh, that kind of things. So a little bit about the, the role of emotions. So what is the role of emotions? So before I answer that, I just want to say it again. I've, I've said this um, at least a few times before in this series of, of Energy Play Shop is that we are we are not just spirit. We're not just body. We are actually a spirit, mind, and body complex. And so we are more than just one thing. We're not just body. We're not just a slab of meat. And we are not just the, the, the spirit itself. Because the reason why we want to play in this reality is not so that we can be the spiritual person own and we live in the clouds. That's not what this is about. It's actually about being all three, being able to integrate all three, the spirit, the mind, and the body together to really activate the body. And what is the role of emotions in this, in this spirit, mind, body complex? is to enhance our experience of this reality. So um, emotions are not, even though we feel in our body because the energy is, may get stuck in our body, we may feel aches and pains in our body. So when energy gets stuck in our body, we feel aches and pains in our body. And if you feel any aches and pains in your body, you know that, um, there is some emotions being stuck. There is something there that you need to look at and really um, start to release, get an understanding of what it is. And, and so 
However, other than being able to feel aches and pains in our body when the emotions get stuck, emotion itself is not something that is tangible. And on some level, you, you can argue that emotions are not actually real. Real in the sense that we can, we can um, touch it. We may be able to feel it, However, the emotions itself is, is here to enhance our experience. It is not something that we, um, it, is, it is like a spice. It enhances the food that we eat. So emotions enhances our experience of the reality. So why emotions get stuck is because we, we haven't been very good at understanding um, what it takes in order to let go of emotion, I, I would say. And um, so we haven't been taught how to really let go of emotions. And we do the best we could, we could and we um, really left a lot of things that are unprocessed. So within the body itself, for example, um, so all these emotions coming up is part of clearing the body. And that's why, that's why it has to do with the body. Um, our body has actually gone through a lot of abuse since, well, since humanity has been having bodies, it, it has really gone through a lot of abuse in the last, I don't know, 10, 15,000 years, maybe even longer than that. So it's, it's, so when, um, when the bodies have all these layers and layers of emotions that haven't been cleared out properly and just respected and then let go properly, then it adds up. So now is really the, the time. That's why energetically we are being supported to let go of these emotions that are stuck in our body. Um, I think I have a note somewhere to, to talk about um, a little bit about a word about um, empath. So what, what is an empath? Um, I believe I am, a, I am an empath. And what I would consider an empath is, is someone who um, is able to feel what other, people's, what other people are going through within my own body. So that's how, that's why, um, so how did I, I figure that out is that a lot of times when I feel certain emotions and certain sensation in my body, I have no clue where it came from. Um, like I, I, I think I shared a story on this, is that the, at one point, um, not, not this year, not, not this place that I'm living in currently, but the previous location, that I was living at, and uh, we at one point there were some other, there were um, people from uh, Airbnb. One of the rooms had been in, used as an Airbnb, so there will be different people coming in. And I remember there was this one time this this young lady came in, and I just somehow I felt this, you know. Um, aggressiveness, this, this, this um, frustration, uneasiness towards this, this young lady. And this, this young lady has done nothing to me. She has, she has not said anything rude. She has not insulted me or did anything in any way that um, would account for how, why I, I, I have these um, feelings, these I'm, I'm sensing all of these emotions. And so I think I, like after a while, I, I, I caught on is that, oh, okay. So 
I'm, this is, these are not my feelings. I am just sensing her feelings. So that is, and I always forget that I can sense other people's um, emotions and feelings and know what they're going through. And, and um, it doesn't have to be proximity. Like when I'm, when I'm close to somebody, I will feel them what's going on with them and then but, but it's not just that even when I'm talking to somebody or when I'm hearing somebody telling me certain stories I actually can can feel it in my body I can I can feel the sensations in my body so so that's how I know I am an empath and I know um, I'm not the only one um, so there are empaths out there so I just want to also mention that one of the things about emotions is you need to be careful that sometimes uh, they're not your emotions, um, especially if you don't know that you're in an empath or you don't remember that you're in an empath. You have to know that um, not all emotions are not are you. Um, actually, most emotions are not you, not yours. Um, um, well, perhaps some emotions are yours, depending on how, how diligent you have been in um, being able to clear your own emotions. I've been pretty good at clearing my own emotions. So I know that a lot of things uh, that I sense, especially when I am around other people may not be mine. So I'm, I, I, I'm much better at, at being able to remember, remind myself that what I'm feeling may or may not be mine. So don't take it personally. Um, and even if I feel something, is that now I actually um, am getting much better at, at um, dealing with myself when emotions come up. So then the next thing is, I want to talk about is how to stabilize your own emotions, our own emotions. So, um, as life goes on, we will, we will, there will be things that will trigger us, things that will trigger us. So, um, for example, let's say watching a, a video of, um, I, today I actually watched a video of um, this guy, what's his name? Oh, Desmond Shum. Okay, so he, he is a like a billionaire, really rich, rich man who um, went through something. He actually published a book called The, the Red Roulette. It's talking about that the, um, it's, it's actually talking about his wife, his, his own, it's, it's about his own experience that his wife is also a, very powerful entrepreneur, or his ex-wife, I should say, was a very powerful entrepreneur. But however, she all of a sudden, um, a couple of years ago, just went missing. In, and, and she was in China and all of a sudden just went missing. Didn't hear from her, nothing like that. And I think at that point, he was living in the UK. So he was not living in China. And all of a sudden, um, didn't hear anything from his wife, his ex-wife, for a couple of years, and 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 so in, that's not an isolated incident. It is so. It's, it's talking about the um, all the suppression in in China. Um, so even if you are a billionaire, it doesn't matter. As as long as you've done something that um, the, the government think that is they don't like, or if you know something that they don't want you to know that you're not supposed to know, like for any, whatever reason, they would all of a sudden make you disappear. They voluntarily make you disappear. And you may or may not ever be heard from again. So, and so that's the, so I was listening to him talking about this and I was like okay this 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 fear came up like wow and also this frustration that about um governments being able to do that so um there's no regard for um for freedom 
So that's like, so something like that, when you get triggered, the first, the first thing is when you're triggered, you're emotional. So it's, it may not be easy, depending on how triggered you are, it may not be easy to um, just clear your emotions right there and then. So I would suggest that before, when you're triggered, before um, starting to clear your, your emotions, try to clear your emotions is to stabilize yourself first. So first thing to do when you get triggered or when emotions come up is to stabilize yourself. So how do you stabilize yourself? You may ask. First thing I want to do um, that, that I suggest is, is something that you don't need to do. Uh, I would actually highly suggest that you don't do when you're triggered is to actually do it make it a part of a daily practice is to connect yourself um, because we are spirit, mind, body complex. Um, depending on how consciously aware you are, you may not know that, you know, you are, you are a spirit, mind, body complex. You may only identify with your own body in that case, um, it may be a little challenging. However, if you if you do the practice of just connecting all three parts of you, the spirit, mind, and the body, then it actually starts to shift your consciousness. It actually starts to make it easier for you to stabilize yourself. So how do you, how do you do that? I suggest using some mantra. You can use mantra. And um, I actually have a slide with all the different mantras. Like you can use any mantras that you want. I am just suggesting some of these mantras. Um, hang on, let me just shrink this enough so that you guys can see all of it clearly. So these are some of the mantras. Um, some of these are, oops, sorry. Some of these are from Franco. Um, so I am source, I am source the spirit of creation. I am eternal spirit embodied. I am my own creation. I am the observer of creation. I am immortal. I am infinite. I am all that is. So you can pick any one of these. You can pick any combination of these and you can absolutely create one or tweak any one of these to make sure that they resonate with you because um, everyone's consciousness is, is at different levels. So you just have, you need to pick the one that resonates with you the most. For me, the one that you know, resonate with me the most is I am eternal spirit embodied. So that's the one that I, I would always repeat to myself. So what is this practice about? So first is to pick a mantra. Um, feel free to, to um, use any of these or come up with your own, it does not matter. Pick a mantra. So mine is, I am eternal spirit and body. So pick a mantra and just as part of your practice, Part of your practice is you can do this um, maybe just before like I what I do this is, is I actually just um, I repeat it to myself a lot so throughout the day every now and then I would repeat this to myself and I would just take maybe a minute out of the day a couple times a day is to just um, be in a quiet place and just quiet myself down 
and then just give myself a minute or two or three. Like it depends on how you want to do it. If you only have one mantra, you may want to just do it for two minutes. If you have a couple, you may want to take five minutes. It's up to you. Is to just to give yourself a short period of time, a couple times a day, to just repeat this silently to yourself. As you repeat the silent need to yourself, the mantra to yourself is also see, notice what's happening with your body. Because you, um, using mantra to connect spirit, mind, and body, is your spirit is going to resonate with some one of these mantras or something that you come up with yourself so that's the spirit part and the mind part also comes into it because your mind would not be um would not resonate with any any of these unless you are at that vibration the uh, the vibration that's being represented by these these um statements and then your body. So you are really trying to teach your body that this, this mantra, or if you have more than one, then these mantras are true. Because if you are at first, when you start out and you are more body focused, you would not, it would not really resonate with you that you are um, eternal spirit and body because you know most of the time we are so focused in our body we 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 are so um like we we put on the clothes and and we pick the clothes according to our body we eat according to our body we um, do work and all of that in order to take care of the body but we we need to do something that will be able to connect that we are not just the body, that we are actually spirit, mind, and body. And when you, from the um, spirit and mind point of view, like from the, you pick that mantra and you start to see how that mantra resonates with your body, you are actually connecting the spirit, mind, and the body, and teaching your body that what the mind is, what the spirit is, is also true and resonates within the body. So you're actually creating that alignment within your body. Um, guarantee that if you pick the, the right one for you, then at first you may not feel it um, completely resonate with you. You may not feel that. You may feel part of it is true. For example, it, there, there's a mantra there that I am immortal. Like if I just, because as a spirit, I know that I am immortal, but as a body, immortal? Are you kidding me? I've seen people die. I've seen myself hurt. I've seen my body um, deteriorating through like from when I was a baby to now. It's just like I'm, I'm getting old and all that. So am I, I am immortal when I first um, say that, that mantra to myself. My body may not resonate with it 100% and that's okay. So the idea is to from the spirit point of view, you know that that's true. So now you are trying to internally repeat that to your body until your body really accepts and also align with that as well. And when that happens, your body will no longer be a child, will no longer be the uh, needy body that it, that it may have been it will start to, you are starting to grow your body from being a child to being an adult and also at some point to be immortal and divine as well. 
So this is what this one is this this one practice is going to do is to really connect spirit, mind, and body. And um, and the next practice that I suggest in order to stabilize yourself that you can do to stabilize yourself is really exercise. Like when you feel triggered, you have that, that you know, either anger or anxiety or fear, whatever it is, do some exercise. Does not have, you don't have to go outside and, you know, jog around the, the block or you can if you if that's what some um, if you call to do that however exercise could be something as simple as um, just running in stationary so just in in this on the same spot just find a, a spot in your room or somewhere that you can be um you don't feel that you know people would kind of stare at you how come you are running on the spot lady so that so maybe in your room or maybe you don't care what other people say about you so that's fine just find a a spot that you feel comfortable in and just um act as though you're running but just do it on the spot so you just lift your right knee and then your your left knee up and just running stationary so that's exercising that's one thing another thing you can do is jumping jacks jumping jacks has the um added benefit is that i'm i'm not sure if you guys know what jumping jacks are is you first you um stand with your arms by your side and your your feet together and then you jump feet apart and how far apart it could be shoulder width apart or it could be more depending on how strong your feet are and with your hands you you kind of um your hands over your head and you can kind of clap okay as your feet is doing that that's what your hand is doing and then the next thing is you pull your hands apart and then you bring your legs together again, back to the initial position. So that's jumping jacks. So why are jumping jacks good? Because when you clap your hands, especially above your head, usually about eight inches, like because um, that's how my, that's usually like how far my hands can reach. It's about eight inches above my head. Eight inches above your head is really um, is a an energy point. So the clapping actually clears energy from there. So that's why jumping jacks are really good as well. It actually clears your own energy field. Um, so exercise. So these are some of the exercises that you can easily do and pick one that you like. Um, jumping jacks are good, or just running on the spot. Or if you have a rebounder at home, you can just jump up and down on the rebounder. So, so these are exercises that is going to shift your own energy so, it, so that you can get out of the being triggered, emotionally triggered mode much easier. Um, and some of the other ways that you can stabilize yourself is um, toning. Oops, I keep bringing this up. Is toning. Toning just means you make sound with your voice. Um, toning is better than singing because toning you can it's you can you actually can pick more the single syllables and because when you tone your whole body becomes um resonating with that energy so i would suggest toning om so for example om so 
you can feel like I can feel it all through my head. So that's the om sound. I actually feel it from my heart to my up to my head. I can feel that within my body. So pick different sounds. You can om is the easiest one to do, or you can try ah or So these are some of the different toning sounds and you can pick a combination. Which ones to pick, it really depends on you. Different sounds affects different parts of the body and you would know which one is best for you. Um, I find that this sound, I that the sound for me is very comforting. And om is also comforting as well. So pick your own sounds to tone and just give yourself a minute or two to just tone. And when you tone, you shift your whole body's energy and you start to stabilize yourself. Um, and some of the other ways that you can stabilize yourself is um, light. So uh, if you have light therapy at home available, wonderful, but if not, then, you know, just go out and when it's sunny, just go out and walk in under the sun for five, 10 minutes. Don't have to, don't have to be long. I do feel that when I'm under the sun, especially, I feel recharged, no matter where my head space may be. But once I like walk around under the sun, it's like, it's like things just dissipate and and becomes um, better for me so that's that's what I notice about how sunlight affects me so you would uh, have to um, test your own and, and try which ones work best for you so these are some of the methods that I would suggest so definitely go with a mantra um, you can use any mantra to um, even when you are triggered, you can use mantra. But I also actually suggest using mantra as a daily practice, not just when you are triggered, to connect spirit, mind, and body together. So some of the mantra mantra that may be helpful um, when you're triggered is is that you know I am my own creation or I create my own reality. So some of those. So pick a mantra. A mantra can be a great way to stabilize and shift your own emotions. Um, exercise, light exercise. Um, just walking under the sun. Or if you, if you have a, a full spectrum light, full spectrum light kind of functions like a um, like the sun. So it's, you have to actually go and buy full spectrum light bulbs. So if you want to do that, that's up to you. Or just go out and walk under the sun for a couple of minutes or longer, as long as, um, like, don't, don't do it too long, don't overdo it. And then toning. Toning would shift your energy and stabilize you. Okay. So I'm going to actually just stop here and um, ask for any um, questions. Questions about anything that I've shared so far before I continue on doing the how to clear emotion. Hi, Vini. I just want to ask you about that um, um, tone. Mm -hmm. I never heard that it's like 
just one sound. U. U. It's like O or U. 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 Yes. U. Yeah. yeah, that sound. You can do O as well. And you do O. So there is no specific sound. You make it up yourself. I suggest using like A E I O U, and then you can either do, um, you can either put a uh, an H in front of it, as in who, or you can use cool, so K sound. So like, so just make up your own sound, but. Um, just feel how it feels, how the sound feels in your body. Some sounds will be better some of the times. Because sometimes you may not resonate with who. Sometimes you may resonate with ah. So it really depends. So that's why experiment with the sounds. And also you can combine the sounds as well. The toning. I've heard the explanations that sound OM means like we all are one. What sound O mean? Um, I don't know what it means. I do know that the O sound is like when you when you really tone it. What I feel is my organ. It affects my organ in a way that is that I feel comfortable. Mm. So, what does it mean? There may be a, mean, a meaning. I just don't know. I just know how I it feels in my body. So that's like don't don't need to um, know the meaning. Just feel how it feels in your body. So you're looking for something that feels. Mm -hmm that gives you, uh, that stabilizes, gives you comfort. Got it. Thank you. Okay, great. Any other questions? Comments? Sorry, I was late. <laughs> uh, okay, no problem. I was printing out Sifu's notes for sort of the weekend. Uh, okay, yeah, I need to print it tomorrow to uh, and I made an index. You mm -hmm. want me to send it to you? Sometimes so hard to find the pages when he's talking suddenly. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any, any um, so any other comments or questions about so far? So, so far what I've been talking about is really how, like the role of emotions, um, and also how to stabilize emotions. Okay, great. If not, then I am going to continue. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, clearing the emotional body. How to clear the emotional body. So first thing is I want to talk about is the emotional body sweep. What do I mean by that? So emotional body sweep. We've done this before. Um, this, this is really the, the, the motion of from your heart, you moving your energy like in your arm and you are kind of just tracing your body go back to your heart and then you do it on the other side and then you also do it to your face and you can do it like from your heart and then you can go down your feet so that's that's the the, the motion so that's the emotion that i'm referring to how to sweep your body so really to to trace your body however you can actually use this exercise this process in a way that is going to clear your emotional body. So what you do is you just give yourself a, 
a few minutes to um, quiet down, be present with your body, and then remember how we can sync up our physical body and our emotional body, which is we, we use our hands, like use our, when our palms face it together, and you just give the intention that you want to sync up your physical body and your emotional body. So, okay, so you set the intention. I want to work with my emotional body. So I want to work with my emotional body. And then you feel in your hands. When both the left and the right hands are synced up, the pulse on both sides of the palm are synced up. And then you know that your body has become synchronized with your intention. So once you feel that, then you can start to do the body sweep. So what you do is you want to bring in pure love. Bring in pure love. Just give yourself a few, a, a minute or two to just breathe in. Use your breath to do this. Is to imagine that you're bringing in pure love within your heart, within your body. Just fill your whole body up with pure love. And then once you do that, then you just use, you just use your hand to, to your right hand. I'm using my right hand now to trace my left hand. Since once, so at first it is the inner right hand. And then I flip over to trace the outer part of my right hand. And when I trace through it, the intention is to use this pure love to clear and shift any stuck emotions that's on my right arm, on my left arm. And then I would switch sides. So now I'm using my left hand to sweep my right arm, the inner arm first, using pure love to shift and sweep out and let go of any stuck energy. And then the outer arm. And then I come all the way back into my heart. And then I do my head. So all, I would use both my hands to Loosen up any stuck emotions that is from my heart to my throat, and then both sides of my throat up to the side of my head. Shift any stuck emotions. And then you, and then bringing pure love down the front of my face and sweeping any stuck emotions all the way back to my heart. And then from my heart, I sweep it down to my belly button. And I can actually just move this energy around so that I'm just going around my torso area now. Sweeping any stuck emotions with pure love. And then when I really feel that 
looks good, then I go back to my belly button and I just use my arm to sweep over my emotional body and I have my hands separated so that now my right palm is sweeping over my right hip. My left palm is sweeping over my left hip. And then from the hip, I go down to the inner thigh. So right palm is shifting energy, smoothing out any stuck energy from my right leg and then left palm, left leg. And then I would, at some point, when I get down to my ankle, I would shift my hands outside so that my hands are coming back up from my out, the, the, the side of my legs. And I come all the way back up to my knees, to my thighs, so that my right hand is now at the side, my right side at the hip, and my left palm is facing my the left side of my hip, and then I come back in, moving any energy that is stuck in my emotional body, and I go back up to my heart. So that's the emotional body sweep. Okay. So any questions about how to do this so far? It's interesting. I just thought, you know, to rewatch that workshop when you show us the first time. Because when you do that, you remember and then like when you stop, you're forgetting how to do that. And it's actually great exercise. Thank you so much. You like read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, yeah, for letting me know. It's, um, it's that exercise alone, if you just use that alone without like any, any of the other intention that actually can also stabilize you as well. I, I, I know that a lot of people who have done, done that is that just, just by being with your body, you know, just use your hand, you kind of use your, your hand to listen to your body. Just doing that, your body, you already calm your whole body down. Like emotional bodies, all your other bodies, you're already calm. And you can actually take it one step further is to use this to intentionally shift and clear out your emotional body as well. Because you, when you can always set intention to do extra things, the intention. So the intention is you use, you fill your body up with pure love and then you use this body tracing to sweep and clear out any stuck emotions in your emotional body. So that is one great thing that you can do, okay? And then the next thing that you can do, um, number two, um, practice number two, two, to clear your emotional body is to, um, do a practice and the practice is to find, I think it's probably easiest to find a video, to find a video that's maybe about um, five to 10 minutes long, depending on how, how you want to do that. Find a video that actually triggers you. For example, I remember I mentioned that I was watching this 
video about um, Desmond Shum, who, who wrote the book, the, the Red Roulette. So that is, I think that um, video is about 15 to 16 minutes long. So the, the, the whole interview of that, it's actually part of uh, 60 Minutes. And um, I found that video on YouTube. So you can find any video that triggers you. Um, however, is the, the point is not just to let it trigger you. The point is to have that as a, a practice. So the practice is that you have a video, um, it's probably easiest, or you can actually call somebody and talk to them about something that triggers you. Um, let's say if you have, have um, a cousin, um, a sibling who don't agree with you, then you give them a call and just, you know, have a chat with them. Five minutes, 10 minutes, how long, it, how, however long it is. And the practice is that, is to simply, when you notice yourself being triggered, emotionally triggered, is you consciously allow that um, triggered emotion to come out of you. So you don't just allow it to trigger you and you're just getting more triggered and triggered. You're not just letting it to build up. Is that you consciously put yourself as a practice, put yourself in a situation where you know you're gonna get triggered. And the practice is that when you trigger, you consciously let go of it. So you let go of it either by bringing in pure love to just let it go, or you just, whatever it is, the emotions that is being triggered, you simply send it back to the light of God. You send it back to Father Sky. You send it back to Mother Earth. Whatever it is that works best for you. So that is... What um, that's one of the practice that you can do is to just do it, do this exercise very consciously. Okay, yes, question. So, I want to ask you, uh, like the other time you explained us that if we got emo, uh, uh, we, we get um, emotional, we have to acknowledge it and leave it. So we don't have to right away get rid of it. So uh, what's the difference is that right now we have to, um, you know, let, let it go right away. The difference is that this is a practice. So you consciously do this practice. This pra the, the practice is to consciously let go. So that is the conscious. So that's the difference. A lot of the times when I watch videos or I watch a movie, I get triggered. I'm not conscious that I'm, I'm triggered. Like for example, I, I um, like recently I, I, I watched a, um, like on Netflix, I watched Sabrina, um, it's, it's which it's a, um, a series, a TV series about um, witches. And I really got scared. And I was like, okay, I'm not gonna watch that anymore. So that is one way. However, I can actually have that as, I'm going to consciously watch that. Maybe not, not the whole episodes, not, you know, not the whole hour, not the 45 minutes or however long it is just 10, 15 minutes to consciously get triggered and consciously let go of it. So that is a practice. It is like um, doing sit-ups. Does it hurt? Yeah, of course it does. But you're consciously putting yourself through, um, putting yourself in some discomfort and you consciously work through it. So that is the difference is that you use it as a practice and you don't just um, let 
your triggered emotion to come up is you use that. Use the triggered emotions as a method to let go and you do it. So the difference is consciousness. Did I answer that question sufficiently? So we do that just for practice on like things that not really matters, right? Like for simple things first. Or we do it on all emotions. It depends. It depends on how um, it depends on how ambitious you are. So you you may want to start off not with the most challenging videos, not the most challenging videos. You want to start with something that only you just maybe fifty percent trigger, not a hundred percent, or maybe even thirty percent trigger. Okay. So you are only mild trigger. Thank you. I got it. Do this practice until you get to the point where you've let go and it does not trigger you anymore. So you know that you have extended your tolerance, your ability to let go of emotion. And then nope. you challenge yourself again so you up the game you up the game I oh when Oops, you finish sorry. yeah i'm going to bring okay. something that it's not the the easiest comment but it came to my mind because this is clearing emotions mm -hmm. when i was with my father in hospital at that ward where people were very sick and they were supposed to die soon um people and was four bedroom so people for a couple night and i was there 24 7 and uh before they died they all they would pretty much everyone would go with these sounds like, mm, like whole night whole night couple nights before and then next day i heard even in the next room you could hear that and then in a couple of nights, they would be gone. So pretty much. And then I forgot completely about that emotion. And then my mom was sick, but not that sick that I thought that she was going to die. Maybe 10 days before she started doing this through night, like, mm, and I, I was so frustrated, tired. And, you know, like I didn't know how to stop that. And I completely forgot that that could have been warning that she's going to go, but I, I forgot about previous experience. And again, I forgot of both experiences until now. So my conclusion is maybe they were just releasing everything from this world and getting ready to transition. I have no explanation, but that's my very unique experience and very unusual experience. I would never expect something like that. As I said, I forgot first experience and with my mom experience until it was brought up through this session. So I apologize for spoiling the night for others, no. but it must have some. No, it's it very, very interesting. Some... It's very interesting. I, I never knew about that. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing. Yeah, I spent at uh, Toronto General a month, like two and a half months before my father died. And we knew that he's, that's the end of his life. So he was in, in this kind of, like with the other patients of that kind. So I experienced that. And then again, I forgot with my mom. So I, now I feel guilty. I didn't recognize that as a sign that that she's just kind of releasing and getting ready mm -hmm. yeah. to go. It's, um, it is this, the, that sound, that the tony sound is actually very soothing. It, it really starts to, um, like when you do it, you understand, you understand what I mean. Is when you consciously do it yourself. It's, it's like your your mom and your 
your dad is they naturally do it like you they probably don't know what they are actually doing yeah actually they did not happen. know my dad didn't do it but my mom and other patients around my dad in a hospital mm -hmm. but he kind of didn't do it maybe he was stronger i don't know like he was emotionally very strong mm -hmm. okay that's interesting well, thank you very much for sharing that is that is good to know. Any um any other comments or question about how to how to do the practice of fearing your own emotion? But um, can you can you repeat? how you actually let go your emotion you can um, you can consciously notice it but how you let it go um you let it go by your by a choice, you, so you're choosing to send that emotion into the light of God, or into um, into the sun, into pure love, back to source. So that is your intention: is you send it out, send it out outside of yourself. So that's the intention, and you do that. So it is really consciousness using consciousness to clear it okay i got it thank you thank okay. you mm -hmm. i actually want to share that i um well i still have one more thing or maybe i can and could you use that as a the, the meditation for tonight uh, however before i do that i actually want to share um something is that This whole reality, what we think of as reality, is, is all relative. We are actually in a simulated universe. It's, or you can think of it as that we are in a, um, what are those things called? We, we are in a game. So we are in a virtual game. So in the game, we have you know, different characters playing different roles and we have scenarios. And we, when we are in the game, everything seems to be real, but actually nothing is real. Body, no, it's not real. We don't know it yet because we have been conditioned for a very long time that the body is real and dreaming is not real. But actually, when you're in the dream, the dream is very real. Just like when you are in this body, this body seems very real. No, it's absolutely not real. Nothing is real. Death is not real. Even you think you're living here, but this is just a virtual game. It's just a game. It's not real. Reality is relative. When you're in a dream, the dream is very real. So some of, if you, so one of the movie I want to, um, I know you most of you may have seen it, is Inception. It's about different levels of dream, levels of dreaming. And then, um, and in the matrix is that it is you're, you're inside a virtual game. So that's what this experience is. We came here to experience that. Why? Because we are going to, ex because all of this is going to expand our own 
consciousness so that one day we would be able to get to the point where when our spirit and our body is so in sync that we think of something and we'll be able to create that reality right away. We're not there yet. We are so not there yet. We can get to a place where um, when we think of, okay, I want this, I want to make, create this building and we just think of it and the building can manifest itself because nothing is real. We create with our mind. All is mind. So I know it may be hard for some of you to, to understand this. The reason why I bring this up, um, just to throw in this curveball here, is that clearing emotions, when like all the emotions that we have in, all the emotions that we have, none of it is real. It is, we can let go of the emotions. It's, it's just that we have not, or I should say that we have been so um, dumbed down in our consciousness and our body has, our physical body has gone through so much abuse and we are so um, full of fear and unprocessed emotions that it had been so hard for us to let go of emotions, but we are getting to a new level of gaming this new in this new level of gaming, it is much easier for us to let go of emotions. And um, at first, when you decide that, you know, I want to let go of this emotion and send it back to the light of God, at first, it may not be easy. But the more you visualize it and really feel Allow yourself to feel that emotion leaving your body because it is simply just a choice. Everything is just a choice. If you choose to no longer feel that emotions, it can come back. I remember at one point in my life, I was suicidal and I was so unhappy. But now, like, yes, I've been triggered but I cannot get back to even anywhere near that level of um, emotion anymore because I'm just not up for it. I'm not up for drama anymore. Nowadays, when emotions come up, I would simply notice that, oh, it's there. I should look at it and let it go. And I just choose to let it go. And that's done. And that's it. It's so much easier now. So that's what I mean by you know consciousness when you really teach yourself really let your body know that and you really resonate with that you are eternal spirit embodied yes you have this body but this body is only part of you in that there's other parts of you and that part of you is eternal and nothing physical can touch you. Nothing physical can harm you. The real you, it can harm your body. It can definitely make your body feel uncomfortable or maybe even take out an arm or a leg. Yes, that can do, that can happen. But you are not your body. You, you have a body. So when you really... Do the work, do the mantra, keep reminding yourself, I am eternal spirit and body. If that is what is in front of you to do, if that, that resonates, if that practice resonates with you, you can actually teach your body to get to the point where it understands. It becomes the divine part of you as well. Your body can actually get to the same, same level of spirit 
as well. Right now it is not, but it can get there and it takes practice. It actually takes determination to really make that connection so that at some point in time, spirit flows effortlessly into body, mind and body, and mind and body flows back to spirit. And there is no difference in the vibration when you are that congruent. And then you can just think of, in, as, you, as a spirit, think of something and you will be able to create it and manifest it. So that's the journey if you're interested in. So I digress. So now get back to clearing. One more method of clearing the body. And so I'm just going to explain it. And then the meditation tonight is we're all going to do that um, clearing of the emotional body. So the, the third method is really to, um, so first, a couple of steps. First is to sync up all your physical and emotional body. So physical body, emotional body, mental body, and, um, and your spiritual body, sync them all up, okay? So really sync up your, all your physical and non-physical body. And then just um, fill yourself with pure love and raise your own vibration higher to at least 32 inches above, which would take you into fifth dimension energy. Get there. When you get there, just allow the, the, the vibration, the frequency, the pure love and joy frequency of that to clear out your emotional body. Um, okay, so I'm going to do the meditation first, and then I will answer some, some more questions.